Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital where we very nearly have hospitalisation set up in general surgery. All we need to do is get the on-call room and the nurses room in over here and then we're ready to go, which is all very exciting indeed. Although, looking at what we've got right now, maybe some more beds might be useful as well. We've got, what, three down in the main ward and then two over in high dependency. That's not very many beds. We know from past experience that's not going to be enough at all, so maybe we need to get some more beds in as well. However, first things first, let's get time moving on and let's get some money from our overnight stays because right now we've got what, just under $20,000. We need a little bit more money so we can build all the things that we need to build up here. So let's go and get some money in, shall we? Let's get time ticking on. And yes, of course, all the people that have been in overnight are going to pay us some lovely money from all their treatments. And Jennifer King has died. Okay, this is not a great start to this particular video. Patient's condition was critical, and despite your doctor's best efforts, they couldn't be saved. Oh, Jennifer King. Jennifer King, I'm so very sorry. Would a more efficient hospital handle this case better? Probably. Absolutely it would. Um, okay, so what did you have? You had an abdominal shattered wound. Okay, now I remember your name popping up last time a couple of times. I think you did have a couple of collapses. So what is that? Polytraumatic penetration of an object that pierces the skin and enters the body with heavy damage to all neighbouring structures and organs. Okay, so she got shot or stabbed or something unpleasant happened to her, which meant that, yes, yeah, she had heavy damage to neighbouring structures and organs of wherever she got shot or stabbed. Okay, so yeah, she had heart failure. That was what killed her. So all these kind of things went on. She had hypovolemic shock and palpitations and all that kind of stuff. But yes, in the end, her heart gave out due to her injuries. Oh dear. Okay, that's very sad. I'm so sorry, Jennifer King. That is not what we want. And of course, it's bad overall for the hospital because it does bring our prestige down a teeny tiny bit. Because, of course, that's not very good when people pass away in the hospital. That is not a good thing. So I'm very sorry, Jennifer King. Hang on, pause time for a second. Whereabouts are you? Can we find out where you are? Oh, we can't even double click to find out where you are. You're over in intensive care somewhere. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's go and look in intensive care. So whereabouts are you? Is that her there? There she is. So who was trying to save her? Liam the Blue. Liam the Blue from over in orthopedics was trying to save her. Where are the, um, where are the intensive care people that should be in here trying to save her? Why isn't there an intensive care doctor trying to save her? Okay, maybe looking at the volume of people we have in intensive care, possibly we do need to get some more intensive care staff in. Maybe that might be a good thing to actually kick this episode off with. Yeah, because yeah, we've had a death. Now we know there's a problem over here. We need to kind of resolve that a little bit. That's all very sad indeed. But well done, Liam the Blue. Well done on coming all the way over here to try and save her life. That's very good, but yes, there we go, alas, it was not to be. Sorry, Jennifer King. So yes, let's look at getting some more people employed over here in intensive care, shall we? I mean, at least, what, one more doctor and one more nurse on each shift. That would help out quite a bit. So we might need to do a little bit of rejigging of the nurses' room. The on-call room's okay, but the nurses' room has got those kind of drink trolley things in the way of where we could put our desk. So hang on, we need to go and do some moving of things. Um, yeah, so go to there. So pick that up. And just pop that down at the end there. Oh, no, don't put it there, though, because that blocks access or something or other. Put that there and then put that one like that. And then, yes, then we can get ourselves another sort of, yeah, desk, printer, chair, PC combo. So here we go. Let's go and grab that, shall we? Um, hang on. Those desks, can they go to here? Can those desks be red? No, we can't change the color of those desks unless we have to go into that and do it. Um, no, that's a bit of a shame. Which one is it? I'm fairly certain we should be able to change the colour of those desks. Hang on, is it that one? It looks like that one. Why can't we have red desks? Hang on, why can't we change it? Oh, it's because it's got something on it, I bet, hasn't it? I bet it's because it's got something on it that's already in use. I bet that's what the problem is. Okay, never mind. Never mind, it's fine. These ones over here can be red. They can be the proper colour. We'll have the plant in the middle, because I quite like that. It looks very lovely. Um, and then, yep, get the red chairs in, because this department's colour is red. Red for emergency, of course. Um, and then, right, then we want to get computers. So here we go. So pop a computer, a computer, a computer, a computer. Now, I know, by the way, that we could use the glass desks. 
and the glass desks mean you can have two people at one desk. But over here, we've not done that from the start. So it would look weird if we had some desks over there with only one PC and some over here with no, you know, with two PCs on, sorry. So I've kind of made it a little bit consistent. In future ones, like up here, for example, what we're going to see over in general surgery, they're gonna have glass desks. So we can put lots and lots of people in there, but it would look a bit weird down here, I feel, wherever it is over there. It would look a bit odd. So there we go. I mean, it looks a little bit weird anyway because of the different color desks, but never mind, never mind. It's all fine. So what can we put on these? Okay, so hang on. Can we mix it up a little bit and put some different things on here? Can we put on, say, um, hang on, where's all the printers and things? I want to put like printers and things on the tables. Why can't we do that? Where's all that kind of stuff gone? Hang on. Can we put a skull on one of the tables in the doctor room? There we go, because they've got printers over there. They can print to that printer, it's fine. Uh, and then some trauma tools, look. Pop them on there, just mix it up a bit. We'll have some trauma tools there. And then can we have, yeah, disinfectant tools. Pop those on there so you can give your hands a little wash. There we go, wonderful. And now we can get some more people in. So here we go, go to intensive care. So yes, at the moment, We've got, how many people have we got in intensive care? So yeah, there's, what, two doctors and one, no, two nurses. There's only one doctor on each shift. There's one doctor on the day shift, one doctor on the night shift. Okay, possibly that's not very good. So maybe we get another two nurses. So one on the day shift, one on the night shift, and then two more doctors. Again, one on the day shift, one on the night shift. And that means that, yes, if you, at all times over here in intensive care. In the daytime, we'll have three nurses and two doctors. And at nighttime, there'll be three nurses and two doctors. That would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? That would make things way more kind of secure and reliable over here. So, um, okay, let's begin with the doctor, shall we? So who can we have? Hello. Um, yes, we want you to be good at, uh, yeah, specialised in critical care medicine. So that one there is what we're looking at. We've got, what, 17,000 money. So we could refresh the list if we wanted to. Um, hang on a minute, hang on. Let's reveal some hidden secrets, shall we? Karen Lopez is very good. She levels up a bit slower, but she does have very good numbers anyway, so I'm not so bothered. So I think we get you in for the day shift, and then on the night shift, who could we have? Peter Martin, 67%. Um, you've got dirty feet, you have very dirty shoes, leaves dirt everywhere. I kind of feel like that's something we could possibly sort out by making you wipe your feet as you come in. I don't know, I kind of think that's a resolvable problem, really. It's not a kind of a, a state of permanence, is it? Just wipe your feet or change shoes when you get in or something. Um, you're a good boss and you are good at practical diagnoses. Okay, you use your free time to study. You could be late for work. You're a good boss and you're comforting. That's quite good. You've got clean feet. You're good at practical diagnoses. You're loyal. However, you're not that good at critical care medicine. And that's what we want. And you have clean feet and another secret, Susan Martin. I'm thinking, I'm thinking possibly Susan Miller. I know she lives a bit far away, so she might be late for work, but she's pretty good. I like comforting. That's quite good. Um, yeah, let's go for you. Let's go for you. 58% though. Are you going to get better at that? You do use your free time to study, which is quite good. Do you know what, Susan Miller, in you come. There we go. And then over to the nurses. Okay, so we want nurses that are good at patient care because they're not going to be doing operations or whatever. So that's fine. Although, hang on, clinical nurse specialist. It would be good if we could get them in. Um, ah, here we go. There's some people that work well at night. Fast metabolism. So Jessica Baker is going to be a bit hungrier, but she does work well at night time. Hang on a minute. There's a few secrets down here. There's no secrets there, though. You live far away. You're a people person. You're a germaphobe and you're loyal, but your numbers aren't that good. Sorry, Christopher Johnson. Um, you're an alcoholic who lives far away and you're unpleasant. I'm sorry, Jessica Martinez. We looked at your CV, we looked at your resume and we didn't like it at all because you're unpleasant and you've got a bit of a problem with the old drinking and you live really far away so you might be late. I'm afraid it's a no from us. Um, yeah, Night Owl again with dirty feet. Hang on, hang on. Let's reveal the rest of their thing. So you're a fast learner. 
Okay, Sarah Allen, we might possibly get you in. So you can go on the night shift, however. Hang on a second. So uh, yeah, nurse's night shift. So go back onto that one. So Sarah Allen, you can go in on the night shift. There we go. And then on the day shift, ooh, 43%, although you are hiding some stuff from us. Again, we'll press to reveal it. It's fine. Um, you're a hard worker. You're a germaphobe, so you wash your hands quite a lot. But again, in a hospital, that's probably not too bad a thing. And you're loyal. Okay, yeah, Nancy Lopez, in you come. And now we all know what this means. Say it along with me. We now need to go over to the Wheel of Names. So on the Dr. Day Shift in intensive care, we now have Dr. Penguin Trider Headstand, which is wonderful. They did ask, though, for Penguin to be their first name and Trider Headstand to be their surname, but that just didn't work out. The game didn't like that. Trider Headstand was just too many characters. It's too many characters for one surname to handle, according to Project Hospital. So I've kind of put it as two names like that. Hopefully that's okay. That's the best we could do to fit it all in. So we now have Dr. A Headstand over there on the day shift and then on the night shift we've got Dr. Gary Z or Gary Z welcome aboard and then over in the nurse's place we've got on the day shift Tama or Tama possibly hopefully I pronounced that correctly on one of those two guesses and then on the night shift we've got Rumble God so there we go hopefully that will make things a little bit more efficient over here in intensive care oh crack I forgot we're on maximum speed they could have all sprinted into action there but yeah now I've got the two doctors Hopefully that might make things a bit better. And there we go. The money is pouring in from all the people leaving from their overnight stays. Carol Brown's having a little bit of a collapse. I think she's in the right place. Yeah, she's over there. Oh no, we've mistreated Robert Baker. Hang on a minute, Robert. Hang on. We're dealing with something else right now. Can we just make sure that somebody goes over to Carol? There we go. I think she's fine. Right, Rob, what's going on with you here? So hang on a second. What have we got? So... We apparently did this wrong, although normally it does have an incorrect thing there. So a foot contusion or an ankle fracture. I mean, I would say that should be fairly obvious to sort out. I mean, if we send him to an x-ray and the x-ray comes back and there's a big fracture in his ankle, I would say it's an ankle fracture. Whereas if he's dropped something on his foot, like a hammer, for example, as this picture implies, then I would say it's a foot contusion. Um, okay, it's Dr. Dave over, over in this sort of, yeah, Dr. Dave at the wee hours, sorry. So he should be okay with this. He should be okay. So hopefully he can sort that out. Although I would say, hang on, available, oh, there you go. Yes, available examinations, x-ray, lower limb. I would say that's what we want to do with Robert Baker here. So hang on a minute. Can we follow him on his merry way? He is taking his time because, of course, he's a bit poorly. Um, right, okay, more people are collapsing. There's quite a... Oh, we've lost somebody else. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. We've lost Peter Hill. Peter Hill, with his leg-shattered wound, has died from... What's that? Is that what killed him? Hypovolemic shock. So, yeah, critically low blood pressure. Oh, no. Oh, this isn't going well at all. Okay, right, this is bad. Now, a few people in the comments have said, oh, you might want to get a pathology department set up. That could be quite good. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe it would be a prudent thing to have now, but alas, we can't do it right now. That's all very sad. Okay, well, hang on. Let's follow Robert and just make sure that he gets to where he needs to go and that he gets seen nice and quick. Right, he's going up in one of the lifts onto this floor. And where is he? He's going straight in for an x-ray. Oh, he didn't even sit down. He didn't even have to wait. Straight in, trousers off. There we go. <laughs> Hello. And um, hopefully that will help out. It's a foot contusion. There we go. Maybe when he came in before that wasn't available or he got bored of waiting in line for an x-ray and went home or something. I'm not entirely sure. But there we go. Now he's kind of back over here. And there's quite a lot of people. There are many, many people over there waiting to be seen. But yeah, that's good. That's good. That keeps the money coming in. That's all nice. Right. Okay. Can we try to have no more people dying around the place? Because that's never ideal, is it? How are we doing with the um, with the operating lounges? Uh, one person is in surgery right now for a... Hang on. A thoracic blast trauma. What does that mean? There's a comedy sort of Acme style cartoon bomb next to them. A blast injury is a complex type of physical trauma resulting from direct or indirect exposure to an explosion. Okay, so they've been caught up in some sort of explosion from a comedy Acme bomb. Okay. Oh my goodness me. Hang on. 
That's a huge amount of money for that treatment. Okay, that's very good for us. Not so good for you because you're in, you know, tremendous amount of discomfort. I imagine you've got fragmented ribs and fr uh, chest trauma. There's something like you've got shrapnel and such like. So you're in a bad way, Nancy Brown. But got some good people on here. That's very you know, encouraging for you. And hopefully they can sort this out. And then soon enough, you'll be at home and it'll be fine. You can have a cup of tea and some cake and it'll all be splendid. Right, so they can sort that out. Ah. That does remind me, actually. Hang on a second. Hang on. Some people did point out in the comments that this area here is not set up entirely correctly. Hang on a second. Let's go to uh, general surgery, then go to there. Um, no, I think it might be set up correctly. Uh, ah, no, no. Okay, yes, it's not set up as a general surgery operating room, although they do share them anyway. They do share them out anyway, so it's not so bad. But given that they're up here near general surgery anyway, we will put them as general surgery operating rooms. So I don't know if they get, like, you know, priority. They get first dibs on using those rooms or whatever. But there we go. So they're both now sort of belonging to, but not exclusively used by, general surgery. There we go. That's a bit better. And we possibly should do the same over there. I imagine when we copy that over, that's going to... So copy those zones as well. So that should be fine when we get that in. We're not going to do that now because we haven't got the money to do so. However, we do have the money to get that set up over there. And then we can hire lots of people. And then we can open up our general surgery hospitalization department, which will be very exciting. So here we go. Let's clear out the people have died notification. Of the corner. That's a little bit sad. There we go. Ignore that. Right. Let's get this done, shall we? So we want to get ourselves, yeah, the on-call room and the nurse's room all set up. Let's go for the on-call room. Why don't we do that first? It's all kind of open anyway. It's all fine. So let's get the glass desks. I like the look of these then. So what we'll do is actually, hang on, hang on. Why don't we have just a row of those across the back like that? So we can fit four nurses and two doctors already there. That's quite good. And then how about over there? We can have another two, and then over here, say, we can have another two. That works out quite well. And then down there, we can have all of the cupboards and equipment and stretchers and everything else. Okay, right, so the on-call rooms are a little bit easier. So let's get the fancy chairs. We'll go for, I mean, they're a bit, a bit greener than the green colour scheme we've got, but that will do. So how about, for now... See, I want to hire quite a lot of people up here. My thinking is, for general surgery, we want lots of people to come up here and then have surgery because the clue is in the name of the department. People are going to come up here. They're going to need a little bit of an operation. And so we want lots and lots of people to come over here and perform those operations. So I think... Hang on a second. Hang on. Go and have a quick check over here. So we need, on the day at least... So it's three doctors so to do the operations... Then we need one surgeon, at least, one, the word I can't say, anesthesiologist, and then we need two surgery nurses, and then three nurses as well. And then we need to get, oh yeah, we need to get a technician person in to operate all these as well. I've not quite got those in yet. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to need an awful lot of people up here to make it work properly. And if we want to, say, have two teams of people doing surgery at the same time, which would help out quite a bit with queues, we're going to need, what, at least six doctors, if not seven doctors, possibly. So we can have one doing the rounds over here. And then, yeah, at least, what, two surgeons and two anesthesiologists and many nurses and lots of surgery nurses. So we need an awful lot of desk space. We want lots and lots of chairs around the place. So how many can we fit in right now? Do we need some more tables, possibly? Do we need more tables? That might be what we need. Hang on a second. So go to the office chairs. They can be in green. So one, two, three, four. That's only six chairs over in on call. That's what, two surgery teams. But then if they're both in over here doing important surgery stuff, there's nobody over here to deal with patients on the wards, which I imagine is an important thing that doctors have to do. They have to go and do you know, their observations and checks and things. So I think maybe we get another desk in. We need another desk. Now, can we better arrange this before people actually, you know, sort of move in, as it were, and start doing stuff here? Can we please arrange this a bit better? So if we get rid of that there, pop that there, is that going to be okay if we put another one? Hang on. Move that table to there. So that's six desks. 
And then, could we pop... Could we have another one there? Could we have another one there? I don't know. Let's move that one for now. Is it happy? Can we then put a chair there? We can't. It, that chair's the rubbish chair. Nobody wants to be in that seat because it's not very good. <laughs> it's a little bit squished into the corner, but I think it's fine. Right, okay. So like that. Or do we put... We can't put it down there though, can we? How about... Hang on, hang on, hang on. How about we have it like that? And they can have a chat opposite each other. That's quite nice. Although, is there still enough room to get round the corner? Um, no, do you know what? If there's a chair there, I don't think there is. I think if there is a chair just there, it's going to block the way in. They're going to be stuck. They have to go all the way round to go through that door. Ah, uh, no, that's not going to work either, is it? Botherations. Okay, never mind. Um, is there anything we could do up here? Uh, unless we put it like that and then move that down and move that down and then just put a cupboard in that corner or something like that. That might be okay. That possibly should be fine. And then we'll put that down there. Yeah, do you know what? Again, a little bit squished. It will do just fine. So pop that in that in. We're going to have so many people. So many spins on the wheel of names. It's going to all be very silly indeed. Um, okay, so we want PCs. So yeah, loads of these. We're going to spend quite a bit of money on setting this up. It's going to be very, very expensive. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, and then in there we need either... Yeah, we need a printer in there at some point. Hang on a minute, hang on. Can we get a little table... Uh, would, a, would a printer fit on a stainless steel cabinet? If we put that there and then put a print in it, it doesn't fit on one of those. Okay, you can have one of those anyway as a little present. Yay. Um, okay, how about then? What if we put a desk there and then on here we can have a big printer and then over here we can have a little printer. Yay for the little printer and the big printer. Okay. So that's now a valid room. Of course, it's not entirely set up as we might want it to be. It's lacking a few very important things. Uh, we'll put a clock on the wall, because that's quite nice. We'll pop a clock onto that wall there. Um, it is, of course, missing a plant. Clearly, it's missing a plant. Um, it's a shame we can't have more plant variety in this game. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, we'll have one of them just there, because that's quite nice. And then we do need... Do we need a bin over there? I'm not entirely sure we do need a bin over here. I think we can muddle through without a bin in that room. We'll put the bin over here. So now we need to do this room here. Um, yep, we need to put some wheelchairs and such like in as well. They could go down here, possibly. So we'll put some stuff on there, and then we'll put some stuff down here. So um, hang on a minute. Rotate it round like that. That's a bit better. So we need... How many people have we got there, then? Hang on a second. So I've, I've pressed the rotate button. I didn't want to do it. There we go. That's better. Right, so get the chairs... So one, two, three, four, that's six people we can have employed there. So we're going to need six, we're going to need another two. We need another desk. Okay, that's fine. We can work on that. So there we go, grab a desk, put it there. Everything is wonderful. And then down here, we need to put all of the important things. So let's move that out into the corridor for now. Don't forget that's there. There's probably all sorts of you know, detritus littering the corridors where I've put some and got, oh, I'll come back and get that, and I've completely forgotten. So, how about then, over in that corner, we have one of the big equipment things. So that sorts that requirement out. That's absolutely fine. Uh, yep, hang on a minute. Lots of computers. Yep, we need all that kind of stuff. Hang on, drop all them in. And the chairs, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very busy up here in general surgery. Look at that. Loads going on up there. Um, and then, yes, along here we do need, I would say, at least one stretcher. Oh, they have got stretchers not too far away over there. That's a lovely kind of multicoloured array of, you know, go-go mighty morphing power stretchers over there and wheelchairs. But I think maybe, should we put some in? Do we need them? Uh, what else is going to go in here? I mean, I would like a little... We need a plant, of course we need a plant. In fact, do you know what? There's a perfect space in the corner for a lovely plant. There we go. Uh, we'll put it in a nice kind of uh, pale coloured pot type thing. There we go. Lovely. So that's that sorted. So then, yeah, oh, hang on a minute, hang on. Can we just put a few more interesting things around the walls? Can we put something over that plant? No, apparently putting that poster there interferes with the operation of the plant or something. 
Um, how about then we just pop that on the wall as you come in, like a little information board. That's fine. Um, and then, yeah, where's the where's the thing on the wall? Yeah, first aid kits. They're quite handy. I imagine that's quite a useful thing to have. So pop that on the wall over there. And then, yeah, down here, I'd like to get just a few little bits and bobs. Just like a few cabinets or maybe some tables or something like that. Um, equipment table. Just have a few of these. Just like maybe have two of those, look. And then we can have possibly a couple of wheelchairs. We'll have white wheelchairs. So one and two of those. That'll do. That. Oh, hang on. We need a meal tray. Pop a meal tray just there. There we go. So you come in, you bump into the meal tray. There's loads of stuff down here that we possibly don't need. Hang on. Hang on. Spread that around a bit like that, please. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Um, do we need another meal tray? Or is the one enough? I don't know. And then on here, because I kind of feel like we need to put some more equipment in here. So we'll have a little kind of, uh, hang on, glassware barrette. That doesn't fit on there. Regular glassware. No, small glassware. That's what we need. Teeny tiny glassware. And then what else can go on there? Scrubs. They need a scrub shelf. They need a kind of high up scrub shelf, don't they? I think that's kind of important. So if we put uh, scrub shelf, scrub shelf wall. What's the difference between scrub shelf? Uh, oh, that's, got, oh, that's going on the floor. Hang on. No, that. Yeah, I want this is a wall mounted one. Yeah, that's what we want. Absolutely. Yeah. So one and two of those so they can grab some things. Um, however, yes, if we could, if we could, oh, hang on a minute, what have I done? That one there, can we make them a different colour? Make that one the purpley colour. There we go, wonderful. I like that. And then in here as well, it would be good if we could have a water machine. So they don't have to go all the way to here to have a drink. They can just quickly run over there, grab a drink of water, and then get back to work if that's what they need to do. So I'll put that there. Um, and then just some other nice things. Can we just dot some more bits and bobs around the place? Can we put, say, some posters just for fun? Hey there, there you go. Remember our arteries? And over here on that wall there. Um, no, not on that wall there. We're not allowed to put it on that wall. Forbidden wall over there near the elevator. Naughty. Um, we'll put that thing there about hearts. I think that's it. I think they're set up. It's recommending a stretcher, but there's no room for a stretcher. This is not going to fit into that space unless we put it... I mean, could we put the stretcher? No, it's not going to fit. It's not going to fit. I think we just have to admit defeat. Unless, unless we do put the stretcher sort of there. Hang on, how does it work if you put that there? No, it's okay with that, but it has blocked those off. Okay, maybe... Okay, hang on, we must be able to work this out. There's got to be a way <laughs> where we can do this. Okay, how about pick up the plant... Put the plant there. That's fine just there. That's not blocking anything. And then the stretcher can go into that gap there. There we go. It's a bit of a squash and a squeeze, but it will do for now, I think. And then I think as well, we might as well grab a bit of this. So let's grab, I don't know, grab that and we'll have... How much is it for one bed with the associated piece of lovely privacy wall as well? Three and a half grand. Okay, so get two more of those in. We won't get another high dependency bed in quite yet because we can't afford that. At some point, we do need to get those set up, but not right now. Um, and now it just comes to hiring a gigantic amount of staff. But again, we're going to need some money to actually be able to yeah, refresh the list and check their hidden talents and perks and all that kind of stuff. So maybe we do need to run time on a bit more just to maybe get through to the next day so we can get the best staff we can up here. We've spent so much money and time and effort on this department. I don't want to kind of, you know, staff it with kind of people that we go, ah, well, they're all right or they're okay. I want it to be you know, really good, high quality people up here. So let's run time on. Let's see what happens around the place. It's still got the flashy on and off kind of, you know, it's sort of, you know, emergency kind of, you've not quite set it up right. There's a problem over here. So, you know, it's almost there. It's almost their game. It's looking pretty good. So I think, yes, as the more money comes in, we've then got to pay for the um, pay for the day shift people, of course. Um, bed required for treatment. Replantation. What's replantation? What's that? Surgical reattachment of a body part. Oh, okay. Required room office. Diagnostic unit at an orthopedics department. 
but you're in... You're in traumatology. Okay, I'm a bit confused. I've been waiting for a long time. You might have to wait a little bit longer. And you're waiting over in... In traumatology as well. Okay, hang on. There was a problem. Ah, I remember. Yes, hang on a second. Hang on. Over here, in traumatology, there was a little bit of an issue, wasn't there? And we were going to use that space there for a new doctor room. Maybe we have to get that done if people are, if people are waiting. Hang on. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, long wait for an examination. So you're just... Um, you are over there, though. You're in... You're in... Hang on. What exactly are you waiting for, then? What are you waiting for? You're waiting for an examination. Which one? Maybe we just need more people. We might just need more doctors over here to just go and do more examinations. Possibly that is the issue. So I think, yeah, it's just time because they're all busy and doing stuff. Um... Okay, okay. Can we fit? Oh, it's really cramped over here, isn't it? I forgot about that. It's really busy. These rooms are nowhere near big enough. I don't think we can fit any more people into there. Um, okay, hopefully that problem will go away. We're we just going to hope that it's not happening anymore. We're we just going to pretend that it doesn't exist. And we're just going to go over here and look at our lovely general surgery department. And it's nice soothing shade of kind of pastely sort of green. Oh no, Mark Martinez is having a bit of a collapse. He's been struck by lightning. Oh, okay. A rare injury caused by direct or indirect hit by a lightning strike. Right. Okay. So he's unconscious. He's got a broken arm. He's weak. His arms hurt. His legs hurt. He's got a burn. He's got a headache. He's got muscle pain. I, I am not surprised, Mark Martinez. Lightning is... Yeah, I imagine it's quite painful if you get hit by it. Okay. There we go. So he's in Paul Jackson. Hospitalization is not up and running yet. We know. We know this. It's okay. It's fine. Yep, he's, he's going to clear off. You have to clear off. Let's send you somewhere else ourselves, actually. Away with you. Thomas Miller's having a collapse. Oh, I didn't mean to press that. Hang on. What's up with you, Thomas Miller? You've got mild frostbite. And that's led to complete heart failure. Crikey's. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, hang on a minute. What is going on? Um, William Harris. Diagnosing a patient proved to be difficult for the doctor's diagnostic skill level. Is it Dr. Penge by any chance? It is Dr. Penge. <laughs> oh, Dr. Penge. I admire your, you know, how you try, but you're not that good, are you? Oh, Dr. Penge. Um, okay. What's going on then? So we've got somebody who could have irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease. Okay. So we don't know what to do next. I mean, I would say, can you do differential diagnosis? You can. You've got it 1% differential diagnosis. Maybe do that. Give that a go. Although, would it be better to go and do something else? How about that, actually? CT enterography. Computed tomography. Ent Hang on, what? Computed tomography CT enterography is diagnostic imaging modality creating detailed images in the intestines by injecting intravenous contrast after the patient has ingested liquid contrast. That is possibly one of the most complicated sentences I might ever have read, apart from maybe some of the stuff I had to read when I was doing my own tax return stuff. My goodness me, that's very complicated. I think what that means is you drink a thing and then they can see it when they do a CT scan. Is that it? Yeah, let's do that. Send you for one of those, please. That sounds like a fun thing that you should possibly have a go at. It sounds like an exciting thing. Um, hang on, whereabouts are you? Can we see if you're doing that? Um, yeah, there you go. You're in there. You've been waiting a while. It's okay. Lots of people have to wait a, a while around here. It's wonderful. Um, ooh, uh, Andre Santich. How you pronounce that last name is leveled up. That's really good news. Right. Has that helped over here at all? Has that helped diagnose this? So let's go back to uh, go back to Dr. Cupboard and see if they can help out a bit. Got 36 grand, that's really good. Right, in with Dr. Cupboard and the cleaner as well. Hello. Right, has that helped? Has that helped at all? I don't think it helped in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, you've gone for a blood test. You've gone for a blood test now. Oh, I thought that might have been the thing that sorted it, but no, apparently not. Right, so now you're waiting for the results of your blood test. This is good. I like how you can do this. I like how you can sort of keep track of one patient's progress through the hospital. 
That's quite a nice touch. So here we go. It's going to get to eight o'clock. We're going to pay out quite a chunk of money. So we've got, what, just under 40 grand. That's going to come down to 13 grand. Oh, dearie me. Right, you're on. Ah, you went to the loo. That's fine. Then you're waiting. Hopefully you can get in to see Dr. I know, because Dr. Penge will have gone home. You're now with Mrs. Betts. Okay, Dr. Betts taking over the case. Uh, and you've got irritable bowel syndrome. There you go. We've sorted it out. Pop to the pharmacy, get whatever you get from the pharmacy for that. Uh, you gave us some money, and that's wonderful. Farewell, William Harris. So here's my wonderful plan that in no way could possibly ever go wrong. We're going to fly on straight until the morning, which isn't too far away now, so what, another few hours? Oh, and Lisa Wilson, you've ruined the plan. I was just going to say, oh, and it's been quite quiet. Nobody's collapsed. And there we go. Lisa Wilson has ruined all that. Oh, dear Lisa. How are you? Another hypovolemic shock person, although... That has been suppressed. So you have been looked after. I know you're still collapsing. There you go. You're back and you're being sorted out. Okay. Now I wonder if we hadn't got the extra doctors and nurses in down in intensive care. I wonder if that could have turned out quite badly. So there we go. At least that's been done. That's wonderful. Um, okay. Kate Walker's now collapsing. You've got a high voltage burn. You've got septic shock and all that kind of stuff. Oh, dearie me. Um, hopefully you'll be okay. I should possibly check. You're still collapsing. Can somebody go and see to her, please? Can somebody... Oh, pause time. That'll be why nothing's happening. She's undergoing stabilisation. She's now been treated. Okay, this is good. Um, That person's complaining about something. That's fine. You'll have to go somewhere else. We haven't got stuff set up quite yet. Yeah, bye-bye. Cheerio now. Slightly more important matters going on down here. Although, we do have three lovely empty beds down here in intensive care, which is pretty good because normally... It's absolutely rammed down here. It's normally heaving. So there we go. A little bit of capacity is quite nice to see. Right, move time on as best we can. What have we got? About $22,000. Oh, up to 20, just over 22000 now. That's quite nice. Right, so we have to pay out the night staff wages. And then we'll get the money in from the overnight stays and all that kind of stuff. Oh, we pay out quite a lot of money overnight, don't we? My goodness me. Okay, and then we get the money from all of the different people. So here we go. It's mostly over here, I think, isn't it? Where is it? It's a lot of people over here that pay out quite a bit of money. Although, hang on. Where's all the people paying his money from staying overnight and having a lovely time? There we go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, really? Up to $42,000? Wow. Okay, that's... I'm 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 astonished. My flabber is well and truly gasted. My goodness me, that's that's fantastic. Okay, that's good. That's a good amount of money. That means now we can go over here and get this sorted out. So here we go. Let's go and hire some people. Got a big pool of money to make sure we have the best people. So hang on, reminder. What do we need? I'm going to write this down because I don't have to keep sort of flicking back between the two. So I'm going to write down the requirements of what we need. So three doctors. So we're going to get six doctors potentially yeah we're gonna get so we're gonna get two surgical teams so we're gonna get two surgeons two anesthesiologists and then two surgery no four surgery nurses and then i think yeah we need to get six doctors because that's double that i'll work it out. it's fine well, i'm just gonna press buttons and hope that everything makes a lot of sense but hang on a minute let me go and write down all of these kind of requirements okay there we go that's all noted down on my trusty notepad in front of me so now i don't have to keep coming back to this screen to look at what we need to do surgery so if we need two surgery nurses as part of one surgery team and we want two surgery teams that means we need to hire four surgery nurses maths with penge so i think let's get the surgery nurses down here because there's four spaces down there that would make sense so here we go let's get some surgery nurses on board who can we have um okay there are some okay people but it's not brilliant. Okay, you've got 31 and you've got resistance. You've only got 7% though, Charles Garcia. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Can we please reveal your perks? Um, oh dear. Okay, you're depressed. Always has the depressed modifier applied to their satisfaction. So you're not going to be great. Ah, however, oh, you're quite good, but you're not very good at medical surgery. And you're depressed and you're a fresh parent. Okay, do you know what? This is why we want to get the money together. Refresh that list of people because they were quite fabulously terrible. Um, okay, so these two have revealed all their secrets to us. Um, okay, hang on fresh. Parent rest levels decrease faster. 
but rest level. <laughs> well, okay, fast metabolism. Hunger increases faster. That's okay. You like a snack. That's okay. Um, fresh parent. Rest levels decrease faster. Rest distance. Rest levels decrease slower. So rest levels kind of balance out, but you do only have 14%. So this is terrible. Okay, game. I'm going to spend a new, another two and a half grand on this. Can you please give us some good people? That'd be quite nice. Boom. Thank you so much. There we go. 33% and 32%. Okay, so you actually live a little bit far away. And, ah, but you're better in the daytime. Okay, we'll get you. We'll get you. Hopefully you'll be here on time, you know, plenty of times. Maybe not every day, but hopefully the traffic won't be quite so bad. Um, So we'll get you in. That's good. And then also on the day shift over here, we can have, hang on, surgery nurses. Let's get, I mean, you're good as well. You work more efficiently in the day. And you're fast. And you've got 41%. Okay, James Robinson, you're in. Absolutely. Um, let's just get the day shift in first. Because yeah, it's daytime. Let's get the day shift in. Um, and in fact, right now, as it stands at the moment, why don't we just get in what we need to make everything work properly? Just get the minimal kind of amount in to open the department up. And then we can continue to add people as we go. So hang on. Let's name these people. I'll forget. If we're hiring loads of people, I'll forget some people. So let's name you two. So the two surgery nurses. You're going to change your names. Which means, of course, we need to go over to the Wheel of Names. So we welcome Agent M.O.R. And also we welcome Gary Kaczynski. They're our surgery nurses on the day shift. That's wonderful. And now we need to go over to the doctor. So... We're going to need at least one surgeon. So one surgeon and one anesthesiologist. So let's go over here. Hang on. Rotate that round. That's a little bit complicated to see, isn't it? Um, okay. They can go over here. Look, they can go over there. That's that's quite tricky to spot. Um, okay. So day shift. So we want to get at least one surgeon. Okay. So general surgery 92. Yeah. Operative surgery is what we want. Casey Walker seems very good. You've got one hidden trait. Please don't be terrible. Please don't be terrible. Come on, here we go. Um, okay, you spend twice as much time enjoying food. That's not so bad. However, down here, Karen Brown, we do seem to have a wonder person. You're a Spartan. You're good at practical diagnoses. You've got rest resistance and you're comforting. Yes, Karen Brown, in you come as an operative surgeon. So now we've got one surgeon. Then we need to get an anesthesiologist. Okay, so switch that round to there. Uh, 0%. I don't think we'll hire you. Um, okay, so Frank Cole seems to be the best one. However, you're hiding things from us. You're pleasant and you're a people person. This is wonderful. Frank Cole, in you come. This is perfect. And then we need one more doctor. So just somebody who's very good. Possibly, let's just get somebody in who's good at just being a doctor. Just doing some general surgery stuff. Um, down here, Barbara Williams. Um, you're also a surgeon. You do have dirty feet, but we can clean around that. That's okay. Um, I mean, yeah, because, you know, extra surgeons is no bad thing. Um, how about, hang on, let's reveal the perks of all you lot. Because you're sort of okay as well. Operative surgery, 16%. But um, down here, so what's that? You're a fast learner with dirty feet. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. We'll get Barbara Williams in. So now we have enough doctors to open up. And now I think we get one nurse over here. So let's get just a regular nurse over here who can just do patient care. Just some good old patient care. That'd be wonderful, right? Okay. Um, nobody over here that's brilliant. Let's refresh that list. 73%. That's what we're talking about. Hang on, do that. You're a depressed alcoholic. No, this is not going well. This is not what we want. Hang on. Clinical nurse specialist. Can we order it by that? Um, okay. Rachel White. Patient care 43%. Clinical nurse specialist 37%. Reveal your secret. You're a germaphobe. You like to wash your hands quite a lot. Again, not a bad thing in a hospital. We'll make sure that we put hand washing stations around the place so you don't have to keep going back to wherever it is you need to go to to wash your hands. We'll put some in the wards and such like. So, okay, Rachel White, you can come in. So day shift is done, which is wonderful. And then on the night shift, just to get the department open, we need one doctor... Okay, so you're a surgery person. So let's get a nighttime surgery person in. 
Um, who can we get? 49%. Casey Walker. Casey Walker likes a bit of food, but you are pretty good. So, okay, you can come in on the night shift and do some surgery. That's good. Uh, and then, yeah, so you're coming up as a surgeon. on the, You're a doctor and a surgeon on the night shift. So one out of zero, but that's okay. Um, can we get as well an anesthesiologist on the night shift to go with you? Can we get an anesthetics person just so we can do that on the night shift? You're all terrible at that. No, refresh that list. <laughs> Somebody better. 28% but you live re really far away and have dirty feet. Okay, refresh that list again. Can we get some good people in, please? 25%. You've got resistance and you're a hard worker. Michael Johnson, in you come. So we've got some anesthesiology people. One nurse required on the nighttime shift and that's it. Okay, so let's get you in over here on the nighttime shift. You can have, yeah, that one. Clinical nurse specialist. Again, these are all terrible, game. <laughs> oh dear, really? Why are we not being given good options? Um, well, hang on. What the, the, I don't understand what this button does. Clinical nurse specialist. It filters it down on ones that got 12, 31, 7 and 7. Yet we press that nurse button there. And Jessica Johnson appears with clinical nurse specialist 42%. What's the function of me pressing that button? Why would I want to press that button if it's going to filter out good people? Um, yeah, Jessica Johnson can come in and be our nurse on the night shift. And that's it. That can now open up, I think. The little kind of flashy exclamation mark thing has gone away. General surgery is now open and ready. There's going to be quite a few people ghosting through desks and such like, and quite a lot of you are going to go home as well. But there we go. That's very exciting. Okay, so we now have a brand new department up and running. Oh, this is wonderful. This is very good. Are we going to see them come over and do an operation? That would be good. If we could see them just doing an operation, that would be very exciting because that's kind of what they're here for. You know, a bit of surgery in the general kind of sense of things. So if we could just get somebody over here, that would be good. Although they're going for a break right now. They've had a hard day of sitting at a computer and looking at a screen. And I, I know how that is, game. I'm absolutely aware that's exhausting. So, um, yeah, they're having a bit of a break. But hopefully, yes, we'll see them doing some sort of operations. Have we got anybody in? There's not anybody in right now. Okay. Can we please get some people up into general surgery? Lots of people in the comments promised that general surgery will make much in the way of money. It was going to be a great big money spinning thing. Lots of people said, oh, it's brilliant. Yes, you should get that sorted. Right now, not entirely convinced by that. It's looking a little bit bereft of, you know, ill people that we need to operate on. Um, okay. Maybe at some point that will kind of resolve itself. There's not that many people around, but maybe now that's open. Maybe, say, tomorrow, now that's been open, yeah, sort of overnight and throughout the day, maybe that will become significantly busier. Now, there we go. Our first person. Hello there. Hello. How are you? Welcome to general surgery. What is your condition? You've got calculus in bladder. Isn't calculus like what you do with numbers? Isn't that like maths? Bladder stones can be formed in the bladder due to a memorization of concentrated urine. There will only be symptoms if the flow of urine is compromised. Oh, I see. So like kind of gallstones, but bladder stones. Okay, that sounds really unpleasant. How much do you pay us for that? Um, oh, shockwave lithotropsy. What? I don't know what that is. What? I don't know what that means. Okay, is that an operation? Do you need an operation for that? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, let's see what you do. Right, so you're going away. You're going into... Ah, okay. We have a doctor over there. So who is this? Who are you? So... Oh, we haven't renamed everybody. <gasps> I forgot to rename everybody. That's an outrage. Hang on a minute. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, see, I told you I'd forget. I always forget this. But hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let's make sure that we name everybody. Because, yeah, of course, all these people have got normal names. Oh, my goodness me. This is, this is not good enough at all. This will not do. So, yeah, we've got, what, seven? Seven people to name? One, two... 
three, four, five, yeah, seven more people. So, okay, seven more spins on the Wheel of Names. Okay, so the Wheel of Names has done its thing and something really, really wonderful has happened, but we'll come to that in a second. So first up, nurses. Who's joined the nursing team over here in general surgery? On the day shift, we've got Alex Sergio. And then on the night shift, we've got Hearty Boy. So welcome you two, nice to have you on board. And then over with the doctors, on the day shift, we have Beth, Gael? JL? I don't know how you pronounce that. In my head, it's Gael, but I'm not entirely sure. So, Dr. Beth G over here on the day shift. And then we have Dr. Gethin Allen, also on the day shift. And then we have Dr. Anna Nora on the day shift too. So, three new lovely people on the day shift. And then on the night shift, we have Dr. Kyle Mink. Hello, Kyle Mink. Welcome aboard. And then we have something which is just very, very exciting indeed, because now, also on the night shift, over here in general surgery, we have Dr. Death. We've got Dr. Death. They asked for congenital death to be their name, and they've come up as a doctor. So now we have Dr. Death working the night shift. It's completely wonderful and brilliant, and I'm very happy about that. So there we go. Everybody's got their proper names now, and they got named last time, didn't they? Yes, they did. Right, there we go. Sorry about that. Apologies, folks. I completely slipped my mind. I was very excited to get the whole department up and running. So there we go. Right, let's get time ticking on again. So where is the person that we just saw? Where was the person? Ah, oh, they're still over here. They're still over here. So Nancy Green is still waiting to be sort of uh, waiting to be treated. Let's have a little look. Let's follow you. Let's follow Nancy as she makes her way around the general surgery department. Here we go. So move time a little bit quicker because it looks like she was just left on her own in a room. Right, so back into your bed, which is lovely. Um, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Nancy, can you wait a second? We need to go and help a doctor. I imagine it's Dr. Penge, but we'll go and see, shall we? So hang on a second. Um, it's, oh no, it's Dr. Hoosier. Okay, that's fine. Right, we'll go to you. So what's going on down here? A complicated diagnosis. Um, oh, crikey. There's what, six, seven, there's nine things it could be. Crikey. Okay, so what have you got? You've got fatigue, a fever, and a bit of a horrible kind of sputum-y cough. Uh, that's a bit grim. And you've kind of ended your sort of assessments there, have you, Dr. Hoosier? I thought maybe you might have done some more than that. Um, okay, temperature measurement. I mean, a nasal cavity inspection possibly? Would that help? I mean, no, it's all lungs, isn't it? It's all lung kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I don't know what some of these things mean, because I'm not a doctor. I mean, how about an x-ray of your chest? Would that help? Is that useful? I mean, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you need to look for. If somebody's got bronchopneumonia, I don't know what you'd do for that. Um, Dr. Hoosier, can you do... You can do differential diagnosis, but it's at 1%. So it might not be the best. PCR sampling. What's that? Biological material sampling uh, for polymerase chain reaction analysis. Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what does that do? Microbial, ah, sputum. There you go. It says there, microbial sampling is the collection of samples from the patient. Body fluids, sputum. They've got a sputum cough. Maybe go for some microbial sampling, Charles Foster. There we go. That's what we'll send you away to do. I want to go back to look at our new person. A new person, our one and only occupant in this ward up here. All on there. Oh, hang on. Nancy Green's got up and is having a wander. Are you nipping to the loo? Yes, you are. Just a quick trip to the loo, out the door, and back into bed. Okay, wonderful. I mean, yeah, what is happening then? What are they doing? Ah, they're testing her, they're testing her wee. They're testing her wee to see what the problem is. Okay, although we do know it's that. We know it's calculus in bladder, so surely we need to operate. Oh, there's a new person. <gasps> there's another person. Are you going for an operation? Is this what's happening? Possibly. You're going downstairs for treatment. Um, oh, no, you're going down here. You're going down here into another treatment room. Uh, you're in radiology. So what room is that? I don't know what room that is. Active treatments. Are you rehydrating or something? Uh, oh, you've gone. Hang on, where have you gone? <laughs> Back you come again. Okay, so you've gone back into bed. Doctor's covered you up. He's tucked you in. That's nice. Um, oh, and then you just untucked yourself. Back to the loo, because you do have the need to frequently go to the loo. That's fine, because of what's going on. Oh, hang on a minute. There's now three people up here. You've got appendicitis. Um, possibly should get to that, because that can get worse, can't it? That can get significantly worse and can end up 
being like really bad that can end up killing you can't it um, and another person with like mathematics going on in their bladder okay a little bit weird um yeah okay let's follow you because i suspect we might be seeing quite a lot of this and i want to see exactly how we deal with it what do we do so these are all the treatments already you're in you're in observation so that's okay um, Jordan Lopez having a little bit of a collapse. I'm sure you'll sort it out. They're all—they're really good at this now. They're good at sorting all that kind of stuff out. Right, she's nipping to the loo again. Understandable. That's what she has to do. Right, end of the day. That's very good. Back she goes to bed. That person's vanished. Don't know where they've gone, but they made their bed when they left at least. So that's quite good. That person's been taken away. Um, maybe we just sort of leave her here. Maybe we just sort of leave her. Rehydration. Um, what do we do with that? What? You're not not drinking. You've got bladder stones. Unless you're drinking lots in order to kind of force them out. That'd be a bit grim, wouldn't it? It can't be that. That can't be the answer. Um, and we've tried some sort of shockwave thing. Oh, hang on. Shockwave lithotripsy. What? Lithotripsy. A procedure commonly carried out to break stones lodged in the urethra, the tube connecting a kidney to the bladder. It is non-surgical treatment option using high-energy ultrasound shockwaves to break stones into dust, allowing them to pass. Oh, maybe that's what happened downstairs. Maybe that's what happened downstairs when she went to radiology. They used some sort of fancy bit of, yeah, sonographic kit, because that's a required room, to break down the stones into dust. And they're making sure that she's okay. Oh, that's very good. Um, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. There's, there's plenty of people around doing some stuff. I'm sure it's all okay. Yeah, maybe then. Maybe now general surgery has been open for a bit. It'll get more popular. It'll get busier. Because at the moment, not really much surgery required. Um, although, there's somebody over there entirely on their own in an operating lounge. What's going on there? Ah, it is you. You're being treated for appendicitis. We're actually on this. Although they're just sort of sitting entirely on their own. <laughs> they've been put in here. I think what's happened is they've been put into here on the turn of the shift. So I think they got put in at, say, 8 o'clock. And then the night shift have booked on and gone, we haven't got enough people to do that. And now they're just sort of lying around. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Christopher Lopez. Christopher Lopez. Um, we've got, yeah, about 40 grand. And we have paid out the wages. So we're okay for money. So I think maybe <laughs> just to ensure that somebody does come over and help you and they don't just leave you in there all night long with your appendicitis in this. I mean, it's not really a bed. It's more of an operating sort of table, isn't it? So I don't want you, you to be sort of sat there all that time. So maybe, maybe we could actually get you put in a bed. Um, but I think, yeah, should we get some staff? Should we get some staff to do the treatment on you? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very good is it um yeah you do need you do need to be looked at okay this is fun this is fun right hang on so um night shift so we need we've got a surgeon we've got an anesthesiologist we've got a nurse so i would say we get another doctor and we get two surgery nurses that's where the surgery nurses can go so can we please get two more of you um okay We've got some decent money. So Fraser Jones, can you please tell us your secrets? Fraser Jones, you can come in. You've got resistance and you're a people person. So you can come in on the night shift and then we can have another one of you. Um, you down here, I'm going to pay a grand to reveal your secrets. Are you like a bit of food? Carol Green, that's fine. That's fine. We can get together and have some cake together. It's wonderful. There we go. So two of those. And then I think another doctor as well. Just a kind of generic doctor on the night shift. Um, I mean, what have we got on the night shift? We've got one surgeon and three anesthesiologists. I assume it includes the other people in the treatment rooms as well. Um, okay, so what if we get... Hang on, can we see it? You're an anesthetics person. You're a surgeon. So, I mean, yeah, do we just want to get somebody in who's just very good at doing doctoring? Maybe an advanced diagnosis person? Just a generic doctor? Robert Jones looks pretty good. Can we reveal your secrets? You're a good boss and you're good at practical diagnosis. Okay, Robert Jones, you can come in on the night shift. I think we should now be able to do operations on the night shift. I think that's set up sufficiently to do exactly that. 
I think that should allow us to do that. However, I'm not going to forget this time because of course we now have some people that we need to name, which means another trip over to the Wheel of Names. So following some spins on the Wheel of Names, we now have Big Smarty and Everything Trish over here on the night shift. There are our nighttime surgery nurses. And then our nighttime doctor joining the shift is Cobbler Farms. Welcome aboard you three. Now that's a very big thing because... If I understand this correctly, are you now going to go out and do some operations? Are we, oh no, hang on. They've just removed the person from there. Um, nationwide financial crisis. Okay, this seems topically accurate. Causes 15% lower insurance payments. Oh, botheration. So, in theory, we're going to receive 15% less money. That's a bit of a bother, isn't it? Um, okay, never mind. And Chappie has come all the way back here. So he's come all the way back and they're just having a chat with him. Why are we not doing an operation on him? I do not know. Ooh, laparoscopic surgery. Maybe he'd already had his surgery. Maybe his surgery had already taken place. Okay, so now we just hired a load of people to attend the night shift to do surgery, but now there's nobody to perform surgery on. Brilliant. Okay, that's wonderful. That worked out swimmingly well then. Oh, hang on a second. Did something just happen over there in that operating lounge? What was that about? It's one of the operating lounges that's near to general surgery, but I don't know what's going on there. Hang on, have you finished? It looks like they might be done. Hang on, who's under there? Which patient is it? Hello, what's going on with you? Jordan Lopez. Oh, you've collapsed a few times. Yeah, you're from intensive care. You've got the pulmonary laceration. So you've been kind of stabbed by something. Um, okay, yeah, I think you collapsed a number of times. Yeah, hypovolemic shock was suppressed. Pulmonary laceration suppressed. Okay. So now they finally treated you. There's quite a bit of blood on the floor. It's not very pleasant round here, but I'm sure someone will get round to it. Um, okay, that's quite good though. They got treated. That is wonderful. Okay, so they're going to sort that out. Now they're just going to kind of leave you here on your own. I would have thought maybe somebody would have monitored you until, say, ah, oh, there you go. I was going to say somebody you know, should be looking after you until like somebody arrives with a wheelchair or a stretcher or something rather than just leave you in here on your own after what I imagine is quite a big operation. If you've been stabbed or whatever, they've got to do all sorts of work there. But there we go. Hang on. Can we please make sure we're about 20 grand at the end of the night shift? That's pretty good. And there we go. They're going to go away to wherever it is they go back to back to intensive care then. OK, let's make sure they get there. OK, so here we go wheel them through. Can we go a bit quicker, please? There we go. Right, so they go back into intensive care. And now you're being looked after by one of the doctors. It's Dr. Gary Z or Gary Z. And there we go. Right, so hopefully that'll sort you out and you'll be okay. Let's see what money we get from the overnight people. So 20 grand right now isn't too bad. We might have to hold on on building uh, too much stuff because of course, oh, hang on. That's important because, yeah, we've got 15% less kind of money coming in. A clinic patient has spent a lot of time in the hospital without being treated or hospitalised and is getting tired of waiting. Okay, wait there, Brooke Martin. Hang on a second. Um, what's happening here? You're down here. You're fulfilling your needs at the minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Are you waiting for some sort of... Yeah, you're waiting for a clinic patient spent half a day in the hospital without being treated or hospitalised. If there are tests running, the patient will return the next day. So Michael Clark has now gone. Has he, have you gone? Uh, no, you're hanging around over here as well. So he's gone home, I think. Where was the other person? Hang on, I'm going to clear that one. Um, are you sticking around still? Are you hanging around? Yeah, I think she's waiting. For, oh, just oh, hang on a minute. Patient with incorrect diagnosis returns. Hang on a second. <laughs> Robert Miller. Hello, Robert Miller. Going to a chair. Um, Dr. Hoosier again. Dr. Hoosier. Come on, do we need to have words? Um, okay, can you please do an x-ray of... Hang on, hang on. Chest contusion or a broken arm? I mean, I'm no doctor, but I could work out. If somebody's arm is broken, the problem will be on their arm. If somebody's got a chest contusion, they'll have a contusion on their chest. Have they got a bruised chest or is their arm hanging off? How difficult can that be? I mean, again, I'm no doctor. Maybe it's Maybe it's quite difficult, but... I think that should be fairly obvious to kind of identify. I mean, looking down here, they have done an x-ray of his upper limb. So I'd like to think that they should be ruled out. Why are they not ruled out? Okay, go and have a chest x-ray. 
let's see if that kind of sorts this out. Hang on a minute. Now I kind of feel like we need to watch you to make sure that's okay. Oh, and Jessica Rodriguez is collapsing. Oh my goodness me. Right, hang on a second. Right, you come through here. I mean, you have got a bandage on your arm, which would imply to me that it is a problem with your upper arm. I'm very confused. Right, David Hill has been given the wrong diagnosis. You've got golfer's elbow. Okay, right. So my advice would be don't do any golf. There we go. But you know what? We'll set that to there. That's fine. Um, oh no, now we've lost the person we were... Hang on. Who were we looking at before? Not you. Who were we looking at? Not you. It was... It was You're collapsing. Was it you? It was... Yes, it was the person over here. So we sent you... Yeah, Chappie there. So we sent you for an x-ray. So a chest x-ray. Yes, it's a chest contusion. Um, I mean, we'll just sort of say that now. Um, Brooke Martin has got a bit bored of waiting. Okay, hang on. What are you doing? So that's more urine testing. Okay. So do we need to... Oh, this is very complicated. You do one thing and then something else has kind of popped up. Do we need to bolster the staff down in our labs? Do we need to get more people in over here doing some more stuff? That lady's gone into the lab. What? Lisa Hernandez. Why are you in the lab? You shouldn't be going into it. The doors have got big kind of dangerous sign things on saying, look out, there are viruses or radiation. Are they the wrong doors? Are they the wrong doors? Uh, no, 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 no. That radiation's over here, isn't it? They're the radiation doors. Now that's like, careful, like you know, bacteria or something, biological hazard. Um, yeah, should you be inside? <laughs> I don't think you should be in there. It says biohazard on the thing, but okay, fine. Just wander into the biohazard room. Why don't you? You're waiting for... I don't know what you're waiting for. You're performing a lab result. You're giving the result to Barbara Lee. Okay, it's a bit weird. Why don't I just give the result back to the doctors via some sort of, I don't know, electronic system. Maybe some sort of electronic mail perhaps might be quite handy. Don't give it back to the patient. So then give it back to the doctor. Just send it directly to the doctor. Okay, you Barbara Lee. Right, so you're going to pick up your results. But yeah, maybe on the bit over here where they need to have the uh, the urine testing, maybe we need to get some more people in over there. Also, we might need some more beds, possibly. Although we do seem to have, at 10.25 in the morning, almost $70,000, which is quite nice. Maybe another pairing of beds over here wouldn't be so bad. So two beds there and two beds there would go quite nicely. I think that's how we're going to have to play this. We're just going to have to constantly keep sort of adding bits and bobs as we get the money, but it should be okay. So hang on a second. Bring that round like that. So um, yeah, we'll grab that to start. So these aren't that expensive. In fact, you know what? Let's fill that in like that. I thought I'd... <laughs> I thought I'd measured that out properly, but no, there's a bit of room at the end for something else. I don't know. We could have, I don't know, a, do you know what? We can have a plant. There's no plant in this raw, in this ward so far. We need to have a plant. Hang on a second. Very important. Press the right button. Also important. Um, let's get the biggest one. I think it's that one. And we'll put it in a lovely, I don't know, like a sort of, sort of a brownish colored pot type thing. There we go. Wonderful. A nice plant in that ward. That makes it better. Um, and then let's grab a couple of these. We need to check what those people are in for. We've not really looked at, they're in high dependency over here. Not looked at that. So hang on. So pop that there. They're going to get a window each. Do we want windows in there? I mean, it's no bad thing to a window, is it? It's quite nice. Be nice and sort of airy. Um, and I don't mind putting windows into the wards on this floor because it's not like passersby can peep in unless they're incredibly, incredibly tall or they're on their way to some sort of you know, stilt walking competition or something. So if we pop that into there, that's another five and a half grand. Do you know what? That'll do. Again, we've not measured that out. I thought we measured that out correctly, but it involves numbers and clearly I'm not very good at that. So that's not worked out either. Never mind, never mind. At least we now have some more beds over here. So maybe more people can come in. A quick check, what are you in for? So you're in for mathematical ureters. Um, you've got duodenitis. What's that? An inflammation of the lining of the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, which is 12 inches long and curved into the C shape. Okay, so you've got a bit of an inflamed intestinal part. You've got mathematical ureters. What are you two in high dependence for? A liver contusion. Okay, physical trauma to the upper abdomen. 
that sounds unpleasant, a blunt spleen rupture caused by impact, injury or physical attack, but with no presence of an open wound. So that needs abdominal surgery and that needs corticosteroids. Oh, okay. So only one of those requires surgery. What about that along there? How do we deal with that? That's that shockwave thingamajig. That is what's happening there. Proton pump inhibitors. <laughs> you find them on the Enterprise. Okay, proton pumps. Um, and yeah, that's another one of these shockwave things. Okay, right, fine. So it all looks okay up here. It looks okay. It looks like things are relatively stable. Got a few patients leaving around the place. But you know what, though, on the plus side, although I might be cursing myself here, nobody's died today. Just waiting for the message to pop up, telling us that somebody's dead. No, it's all fine. Yeah, nobody's died today. So, you know, that's a plus, isn't it? That's always a good sign. And how are we looking over here? Prestige looking pretty good. It's looking very good indeed. Look at that. Lots of stars everywhere. Medical labs struggling a bit so maybe we do need to get some more people over in the medical labs they do seem quite busy yeah look at that there's quite a lot of people waiting and i wonder hang on a second if we pause time if we go and have a look at the medical labs where everybody is waiting two people over there two people waiting down here one people waiting in whatever that is hang on so two people waiting for hematology that's blood work one person waiting for microbiology, one person waiting, no, two people waiting for histology. Okay, so possibly we might need to bolster the numbers of people that we have working down in the labs. But you know what? I think we will do all of that kind of stuff next time out. I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's looking good. There's somebody having an operation or they've had an operation. Peptic ulcer disease. Oh, that doesn't sound good either. Hang on a minute, hang on. Is the operation underway or is it complete? I'm not entirely sure. Um, no, maybe. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Jessica Martin, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this person. Okay, they're they're gonna be they're gonna be fine. Um, hang on. I was gonna wrap things up, Jessica Martin, but um okay. Oh, it's Dr. Covered again. <laughs> of course it is. Um, okay. Something is wrong with your nose, then, is it? You've either got a cold or sinusitis or bacterial tonsillitis. Okay, how about a nasal inspection? That would go well, wouldn't it, Dr. Cupboard? That would make perfect sense. Can we have a little look at that? We'll sort this out and then we'll wrap things up. Here we go. So go and do that, please. That should... There you go. Laryngitis. Dr. Cupboard, I kind of feel like as a doctor, you should have been able to work that out yourself. I don't think we should have had to tell you to have a look up somebody's nose when they have a problem predominantly with their nose. I mean, I'm not a doctor myself. I don't know anything about medical stuff, but I kind of, I, I know as much as that. I kind of feel like maybe you should be, be able to do that on your own. But never mind, there you go. It's all sorted out. Laryngitis, antibiotics. And with that done, I'll pause time now so stuff can't happen again. We will finish things up. But yeah, we've got, hang on. Now you're in over there. She's in for a pulmonary laceration. Okay. So the operating lounges are doing well. Hang on. I know we're going to finish. Hang on. How are the other ones doing? So nobody down in that one, but there is a bit of blood on the floor. So that has been in use. Okay. I think we're sort of slowly but surely getting on top of things. So now with that done and with time paused and with no other distractions, we shall finish up for the moment. Next time, yes, we shall go and have a look at maybe getting some more people over there into the medical labs because I don't think they're quite sort of uh, staffed sufficiently now to deal with the amount of people that require their services so we'll get that done and then we'll try and get these rooms down here sorted over in our general surgery department because they're part of that so we'll get those two sorted and then we can do whatever we like really I'm not entirely sure what the plan should be possibly we should look at getting the infectious diseases ward clinic whatever it is in is it got hospitalization as well um yes it does it was quite a lot of fancy hospitalization stuff I kind of feel like that should be on another floor really but there we go um so yeah we could get that in because then that would allow us to get another couple of insurance companies in because right now we're on eight fully working departments one two three four five six seven eight so if we get that in if we get infectious diseases in, we can get Happy Life on board and then we can get Overcure on board as well. So we can have two different 
insurance companies with more objectives for us to meet and they give us money and all that kind of stuff. So perhaps we look at doing that next time as well. So I think, yeah, that's a bit of a plan unless something else comes along and we change things around or whatever. I do not know. But yeah, that's what we'll try and work toward, I think. But we'll do all that kind of stuff next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Right, if we connect to there and open the door, we're going to get vaporized by this laser and there's an electronic thing which looks like a sad kind of game boy <laughs> i'm a tiny little sort of uh, sort of stick person in a in a computer i can't steer the train as such and look we are outside and we're in a gutter oh happy days hello leaf